Hi everyone, so let me turn my volume up here. Um, welcome to week two of our class. So we have um, continuing on with some more of our readings for this week, which I'm really excited about. So let me kind of walk you through a little bit of what's due. And um, then I'll give you kind of, um, you know, a, a little guide us to make sure everyone's on track. I know week one is officially ended. Um, I know the first week of a class is always kind of like what's going on and what's happening here. But um, hopefully this helped you a little bit see the setup for our class and some of the assignments that we're going to be working on. So for week two, We've got a bunch of really, really good readings for this week, some classics that I'm thinking um, some of you said you've read before, which is awesome. Um, we have Charlotte Perkins Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper. We have Hills Like White Elephants by Ernest Hemingway. And then we have um, looking at some of our readings from James Baldwin uh, for Sunny's Blues. So I'll explain some of this in a little bit here. Um, what we're going to do is for this week, we're going to annotate the yellow wallpaper. We have a padlet on hills like white elephants. And then um, I'll introduce a digital project later this week about Sunday's Blues. And um, that'll be kind of cool for us to work on. So I'm please definitely check out. I've got audio notes and lots of resources for the other authors up here, um, especially with a lot of these because they're pretty popular texts and authors. Again, that's not a bad thing. It's something that we want to look at as a survey to sort of together in class. The other thing due this week is your first paper for peer review. So you could see on here, um, hopefully you looked at last week already, um, the little preview on here for our first paper that we're doing. And, you know, it's a literature class, so we're definitely going to have, obviously, a lot of, um, you know, reading and critical analysis. So what we're going to do is it's a four-page paper, double-spaced. Um, you want to answer questions, you know, you want to look for a significant theme, you want to look for something that you want to investigate in one of the readings so far. You can totally do this based off of um, a prompt that we've done, or you can do this based off of looking at one of our kind of, um, you know, questions that we've had in some of our discussions. But um, what you really want to aim to do for this is seek to investigate something from one of the texts that we've looked at so far. And yes, believe it or not, you've already got like six stories, six different authors that we've read. Um, you do not have to use outside sources, but you definitely want to use the text. So you should be citing line examples and you should be citing um, you know, examples and quoting from the text. If you want to include any outside resources, that's fine, but you want to make sure that they're scholarly and you want to make sure that they're good places to go for information, like not someone's blog, not someone's personal website, nothing like that. So if you need help with that, please, please, please just let me know and I'm more than happy to kind of help you go with that too. Um, I want you to pick and, and look at those questions and look at what's interesting to you. You don't, you don't have to take them word for word. Um, you can completely make them your own, but I know sometimes it's good to have a starting place. I will check in with everyone so you can let me know what you're thinking about working on here too. Um, I also put in here some notes about like what exactly is a literary analysis paper, especially if you're not used to writing kind of this um, or if you're like coming back to it after a while away. So in a literary analysis, you're trying to make an argument and the argument that you make, you're supporting from examples and analysis from a text. So for example, if you are, um, you know, uh, looking at, um, uh, let's say you wanted to use the yellow wallpaper from this week and you're looking at the use of the Gothic in the yellow wallpaper. Okay, that's a little broad. You'll make it more specific. Um, or maybe you want to look at the use of setting in, um, uh, one of, you know, the stories that we've read so far. Something specific. You want to make an argument about it. So what is it about the setting that enhances or says something or makes a point about the text? So a literary analysis is like I'm posing this question or this idea and I'm going to investigate a little bit more. It is not a summary of the story. It's not a summary of notes. It's not something that you explore the relevance to your own life. Um, obviously, it's your paper, but you're not your own personal life experiences doesn't have anything to do with your topic that you're looking to break down and investigate. So um, that can be hard. You you know, you can assume that whoever is reading this paper has basic knowledge of the story. So while you can recap a couple points, you do not have to recap the entirety of the story, okay? And there's some steps you can take here, like, and I'm happy to help you with these as you go through. Um, and it's not uncommon to have sort of a tentative thesis when you're writing, and then later on go into something a little bit more specific. It's a short paper, 
Okay, it's not super long, but at the same time, um, you know, you want to make sure that you're intentional about all the words and all the choices that you make in those four pages. So there's a couple other tips I put in here. You want to write in the present tense. That's something you want to look at. Try to keep yourself out of it, like no I or you. So um, especially as you're going through the um, beginnings of the paper, you know, if you need to insert yourself, we typically do that at the end. Like I said, avoid summarizing the plot. You don't want to literally retell everything that happened. Um, points here about, you know, making a clear thesis. Um, use your literary term. So like talk about characters and themes and setting point of view, symbols, um, the stories are filled with a lot of these things up here and we want to make sure we're intentional about using the right language. Um, okay, so that's another thing too. You don't want to confuse characters. Luckily what we're reading doesn't have tons of characters and we typically only have one author of each text with that too. Um, you like to support your points with lots of quotes and paraphrases, um, but again, you're writing the majority of the paper in your own words with your own ideas. I always say quotes and paraphrases should help you enhance your writing. It should not take away or dominate what you have to say about a topic. And then, of course, we're using MLA. If you need help with MLA, let me know. And this is just a rubric that I use to kind of, I honestly use these for myself to sort of help me kind of go through all of this um, when I'm doing my own writing because, you know, I write tons of these different types of papers and have for a long time and I found it really, really helpful. So I'll check in with everyone about that and then our first thing we'll do is have a little peer review where we'll be able to read each other's drafts and give each other some comments and feedback on that. So that's due by the 15th and you want to make sure between the 15th and 16th um, we're a small group so you'll be giving some feedback to each other on your papers um, and this can really help you just have an outside perspective which is so, so much you know I can't explain how valuable that is especially when we sometimes only see our writing and reading one way and then someone else can kind of give us some more feedback on that too so in a nutshell that's some short pieces on what we're doing this week like I said I'll check in with everyone um, I hope you're enjoying the reading so far I've really been enjoying your comments and um, we can take it from there